What is up, peeps? It's Fuller and TCG. i to welcome you back to another YouTube video. And it is midweek on a Wednesday. I hope you are having a wonderful week so far. Um, but yes, we do have some, some more um, decks, which is kind of the point of this channel, isn't it? <laughs> um, but we do have another rogue deck for you today. Um, it's going to be focusing on Goliathopod, the baby Goliathopod, the one that's been out for quite a long time now and um, has never really actually come forward into the limelight when it comes to meta decks and, and top tier road decks. And I, I think there's a big reason for that. And that's because of the awkward energy attachment of a grass and a DCE, which is a bit hard to achieve uh, consistently, consistently, sorry, and, and, and obtain a flow effectively. But with that said, we are going to be trying this out. We're going to be playing with the Rantis. And the way we're going to work around using the um, Resolute Claws um, more consistently is with EXP Share. So we're actually going to be throwing EXP Share on our Galisopods um, or on our wind pods, depending on whatever's on the bench, to just to make it easier to cycle the energy around so that we don't have to worry so much about getting that extra attachment to make sure we can stream our attacks. Because it's got this very similar problem to Garchomp, where if you are behind by one attachment, you are pretty much screwed. So you can't really mess around. So uh, EXP share works very well with this. Plus, a Resolute Claws for 80 damage with at least one Lorantis. 100 damage on a non-GX is pretty good. On a GX hitting, well, with Lorantis, 170 raw is fantastic. Now, we do have a choice band. We do have the one just in case we have the opportunity to hit some big numbers. Um, and we need that choice band to be able to do that. So this can get some big one hit knockouts on uh, GX is while tanking a lot as well. Having that armor ability taking 30 less damage from attacks is absolutely fantastic. It effectively has 160 HP minimum. Oh, we're playing Registeel. Please tell me this is the Registeel deck that I did. Well, I wouldn't say my particular list. So I wouldn't say it's that bloody famous as it were. But please, please tell me this is like a Registeel deck and a standalone Registeel deck. I would love that. Um, I think I'm going to put a Coco down here. I've got an idea. I think I'm going to retreat into the Coco with the Wimpod right now. I don't want to play the Cynthia because we have a Goliathopod ready to go next turn. So I think I'm going to hold this hand, um, which I know is a bit weird, but having a Goliathopod ready and a Fermantis down means we can just evolve, attach DCE. Like we've got the two cards we need, which is great. Again, I've added the um, Adventure Bag. I really want to try out Adventure Bag a bit and just see how it functions because similar to Pal Pad, I didn't really. You know, I didn't look at Power Pad too well, effectively speaking. And, oh, wow, that is smart. I think I need to start playing Field Blowers as well because I still don't play them. Um, but, yeah, point is with Power Pad is I didn't really look at it as something fantastic. But when you're playing it in a deck um, that needs, you know, a consistent draw in the late game, Power Pad is great for that. Plus, it's great for being able to... It just gives you more comfort in discarding your supporters with, say, like an Ultra Ball. If you need to Ultra Ball away two Guzmas, it feels bad. But with a Power Pad, at least you have the option to return that later on and obtain it in the late game. So I think Power Pad is a, almost a necessity in decks that don't have reliable draw. So uh, this deck, actually, I initially played a Ranguru and it worked pretty fine, but I want to give this deck a bit of a spin and not use the same stuff all the time. So we actually are going to use Marshadow in this one as well, just to give us a bit of extra shuffle draw. So I'm getting a bit of a, a cold sore. It was horrible. Um, nonetheless, they're dropping their Lele. Is that the... I kind of, like, the more I see the promo Lele, I'm kind of just loving it. Um... I've got two of these in the game already for just luck, <laughs> luck of the packs. I mean, I actually, in one of my first, was it my first, like, Guardians Rising? No, it wasn't my first. I think my first Guardians Rising pack, I got Lycanroc, no, Lycanroc's not in Guardians Rising, is it? I think Lycanroc GX is, right? Lycanroc GX and Wishy Washy, are they in Guardians Rising? Because I got them, I got, like, three packs, I think, of Guardians Rising, and I got in two of those. Um, a Lycanroc GX and a Wishy Washy. And I didn't realize that what Lycanroc was actually meta because this is like my first ever time actually getting... Um, uh, let me just use my brain for two seconds. I might actually go for a flying flip here. That seems more beneficial considering we're resistant. So I'm going to actually do that. Um, yeah, those are my first two cards I bought for Sun and Moon. And that's the, the, it was that pack that really made me just want to get back into the game. Uh, this is extremely relevant, Shrine. Uh, so I remember the, that pack very fondly. I mean, we could XP share this one, but we don't really need to. Um, so I'm just going to hold it here and just go for the flame. Yeah, now we get the poison, I'm afraid. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, my phone just vibrated. That's fun. Um, but the, the resistance is really good, and uh, we can survive quite a few turns, which means we are forcing them to evolve quickly. Otherwise, we will take some good prizes here. But the great thing about the Coco is it allows us, again, just to hit those bigger numbers without requiring the choice band. That's why I like the, the, the one Coco in the deck. 
because being able to do spread damage like that is pretty good. I did play two Coco, but I just went to the one. Um, I think just to give me some more draw options because this deck can dead draw at times. Now, does this take 30 less damage from your opponent's attacks? So I'm assuming this flying flip will not affect that Beldum, if I'm correct. Bit of a shame. But, I mean, hopefully we pull a Guzma, because what we could really do is just go for a 150 on this and just get a nice, quick, greedy KO with the Glycopod, which would be really awesome. So, Glycopod is fantastic against uh, non against GX deck. It just really it does struggle a bit against non-GX. But having 130 HP plus the 30 less damage from attacks means, as I said, you have to hit a raw 160 to, even, uh, to, to get the one-hit KO. And if you don't do that, then there's 30 less damage after that, which means you effectively have 190 HP. And if they don't get the two-hit KO, then you effectively have, if I could do mass, 220. So the abilities like armor are always really, really good. One of the reasons why the Mewtwo was played for a bit, the Promo Mewtwo was played for a bit in Malamar because it had that nice softened ability, which means it couldn't be one-hit KO by a Zorark. So... Um, and again, Glycopod does really well against Zorark because obviously the Zorark is going to aim to do some good damage, but you're a single prize Pokemon that it just can't one hit KO unless it locks abilities, which there's nothing that can lock this ability. Um, if, if I'm thinking the only thing that can is slacking and that's it. Um, anything other than that, not really. But I think we are going to take the opportunity just to do some more flying flips here. I mean, we've got this opportunity to do it, so why not? Um, although I really don't like the idea of losing this Coco. I mean, if we pull a Guzma, I know exactly what I'm going for. So we do get an Ultra Ball. So I had a kind of comfortable Ultra Ball, uh, Ultra Balling away this and getting another Wimpod set up. Um, now, I know it's kind of annoying having to discard that, but we're, we're like well ahead on the energy attachment race effectively. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with not uh, putting the XP share down just yet. I mean, Golisopod is not going to do enough to KO this yet. So I think we go for another Flying Flip. And we could get at least a KO on this Beldum. We can, yeah, it puts a lot of pressure for them to evolve. If I'm thinking about it. Um, we could Nest Ball for something. Let's see what's, uh, what's around here. We could get a Ditto. Now, is there any Snipe option for them? They're probably going to get a Solgaleo out next turn. That's my guess. Um... Well, I mean, they've thrown, they've thrown a lot of stuff away already. Um, they're probably going to get Solgaleo out, which means... I'm just trying to see if there's any potential to snipe my... I don't think there is any potential to snipe my Ditto. So I don't mind dropping a Ditto, because it gives me the option to evolve into either Golisopod or Lorantis, which could be helpful. Um, although, tell a lie. I'm an idiot. Uh, drop the Wim. I'm super scared to play this, because all it takes is a Field Blower, and then my deck just kind of falls. So I think we're just going to go for another Flying Flip here. Um, and just leave it at that. I think, yeah, I think that's what we kind of have to do. Um, yeah, because if, if I drop the EXP share, all they have to do is play a field blower. And then, as I said, things tend to crumble a little bit. So, with that said, now, I, did I, was I able to attach an energy that turn? I don't think I was. That doesn't make sense. I don't remember attaching an energy unless I'm not paying attention. This could, I think, yeah, I think I did. This is turn three, free energies attacked. Yeah, okay, I did. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> I'm just a dumb dumb. <laughs> um, but it looks like they're in a very tough spot. I mean, this is quite a weird iteration of Solgaleo GX and Metagross GX. Um, I did see a comment, uh, someone pointing out, which is something I actually do want to address because I've noticed this myself. But it seems like I'm coming up against decks that aren't really meta. You know, I'm not coming up against, like, let's say, Zorak Lycanroc or buzzwell or malamar decks you know i'm not really coming up against them um, and the reason why is that I, I suggest i said it in the comment and he understood and i think it's quite easy to understand but um with me testing out decks constantly for the sake of obviously getting some decks out for all of you guys to see and really exploring the 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 uh the standard format as it were considering that's what we primarily play there are a lot of games where i have to scoop up because let's say the deck's not functioning and i'm like ah no i need to do this so i'll scoop the game go edit and then go back into the versus ladder um and on top of that i tend to lose a lot of games because if a deck's not working and i play the game out then the deck will just lose so uh, in the process of making decks constantly and constantly trying to fine tune them uh, to make them good enough to upload um your effectively your elo which is what basically describes your skill level will start to drop because you're losing a lot of games right I should have evolved the Ditto, but that's my mistake. Again, don't really need... I'm going to put the XP share on the Ditto because, again, this uh, Glycopod is just uh, here. Now, we could go into this 
we could actually hit into this here uh, for 170 damage, and that will equate to 230, right? A choice plan would get the KO, but I think the flying flip might be better again. Because they want to get a one-hit KO. Unless they get some sort of Guzma and get the Kalisopod. Which would be a bit rough. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. We have a KO. We just got an Ultra Ball and get a Lorantis, right? So that's 120 plus 70, which is 190, which will KO this with the Shrine. So if my math is correct, we just Ultra Ball these away and we get a Lorantis out. We retreat the Coco. Keep it safe. And then we go in with the Glycopod and get the one-hit KO on the Solgaleo, right? Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Resolute Claws here for, what is it, 190? Uh-huh. Ha-ha. <laughs> that is beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. We haven't even been able to use our EXP shares yet, you know, to full effect. But all it takes is for this to go down and then bang. We've got a Ditto there and a Glycopod both ready for just a DCE attachment, which I believe we have two of left anyway. Um, which is great stuff. And the thing is, if I, let's say, uh, take this grass energy, throw it onto this ditto and promote the benched Galisopod, what I can do is also absorb the energy from this Galisopod once it gets KO'd and attach it to this ditto, which means I don't need a DCE to, do, to attack. I just need another grass energy. So EXP share sitting on the bench and loading up uh, your Pokemon whilst your, your other stuff gets KO'd is a really cool thing. Um, now, if this thing does stay alive, which it can, bear in mind, this thing can only hit 150. They need a Delmice to be able to one-hit KO the Galisopod, which is so awesome. I was always kind of shocked as to why this card never did well, but again, it's just the awkward attack. Having, having a, not, sorry, not being able to pull off like a single energy attack or something in the first turn is not really ideal. It's very hard to keep up. So yeah, look at that. That must feel awful. If we pull a choice band, that'd be just epic okay so i think we're going to attach the grass energy to the ditto yeah let's do that and that's cynthia now i know i could have gone for a guzma onto that actually that would have been the better play so yeah i think i should have taken the lele down because they can just max potion this thing or manually retreat so i think i misplayed there but that's fine we'll just uh we'll hit him again for a nice clean 160 damage um Hitting 160 every turn is fantastic on, on GXs particularly. But hitting 120 with Resolute Claws as well is pretty cool. The Rantis is just su such a nice fit, I believe, into this deck. It just works so nicely. Um, and Topicoco as well. Uh, we could, you know, really go a bit crazy and throw a Galisopod GX. A GX? A GX? Apparently I've gone Australian. <laughs> a Galisopod GX. <laughs> I can't even say it properly when I try. Jeez, I have a better Australian accent when I don't try and have one. Um, we could throw a Galisopod GX into the deck for just some crazy spins you know but i mean that's way too risky in a shrine deck um but yeah now uh one thing that was brought up to me about yesterday's reggie i was gonna say reggie gigas that's that's a few days ago but the reggie steel deck was uh throwing po town in there and i thought that's a really good shout because that deck doesn't our deck reggie steel deck doesn't play any evolution so we're not going to be affected by it and it also helps hit numbers against non-gx right so that reggie steel deck i made yesterday if you want to check it out i will probably not leave a card annotation on your right hand side of the screen hopefully i did but you know i forget things <laughs> uh, you could go check it out but yeah i just wanted to leave that out in the video so if you guys are working on that reggie steel deck which i know some of you are um i would definitely recommend throwing a uh, some po towns in there as well just to kind of accommodate for playing against non-gx right so what are they doing they're gonna reggie steel uh they are not koing us we take 30 less damage they have to hit 40 damage to even do 10 Okay, so I'm about to say, okay. So they are going to go for the Iron Hand attack. Now we do have a Guzma, which is good stuff. And again, this Ditto is just going to eat up this energy, which is great. Um, I think we're going to Guzma up. The most crucial Pokemon that we need to KO is this Metagross. And given that they like probably really want to max potion it, we're going to just bite them and be like, ha ha, no mates, not happening. Okay, so let's get these uh, Glycopods and Wimpods back in the deck here. I'm going to bench another Wimpod. Uh, just to keep the train a rolling. And let's go for that. <laughs> Give him a little heart there. I bet he does not want that. There you go. 160, 130. Oh, wait, no. Are we hitting raw 190? Oh, my God. I didn't even realize we're hitting 190 raw damage without even a choice band. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's insane. So, I mean, without even the choice band, you just need these two Lorantis out and you can one hit KO a Boswell. Who knew, right? <laughs> I mean... Pretty dope. <laughs> With that said, 
I think we have game. I think if this doesn't get KO'd, we've got game. We just Guzma retreat the Lele and bang. What a fantastic display of this deck. Now, again, I really have to make it clear that I'm not playing any top tier meta deck. Although Solgaleo Metagross is a somewhat meta deck. I mean, Metagross has seen success. Solgaleo has seen success. So this is borderline meta. But the list itself is a bit weird. They haven't set up properly. They, to be fair, they did get the Elm at the start. But they just didn't get the evolutions out. I barely saw a rare candy. I don't think even we did. So there's one rare candy. I don't know if that was used. Um, but we barely even saw a rare candy. So... Um, they just didn't set up, so this might be a result of our deck performing well and their deck not performing well to make it look a lot better. But bear in mind, we're hitting 190 damage raw on a GX. I think that's something to really um, talk about when it comes to Golisopod. Now, of course, you can just be like, well, just use a Legend Executor. And it's like, well, yeah, you kind of got a point. But we're going to have some fun, right? We want to try out new things. That's what we want to do so we're gonna do it anyway we got the win good stuff absolutely good stuff i'll say uh well played and you have a good old deck my friend <sighs> good stuff 190 raw damage hey that's pretty epic <laughs> if i do say so myself now it is quite late so i will be ending the video here i apologize for it not being so long but Nonetheless, let me show you the list. I think it is really awesome and really fun to just play with. So the Lysopod, there you go. Um, and bang. If you want to, you can change a few things up to yourself. You don't have to play the Mars Shadow. I think Oranguru is better. I just wanted to throw a little spin on it. Um, and also, I think the en eight energy is a necessity. Life Forest is great considering its tankiness. But with all that, I think this is pretty cool. No? Let me uh, know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about my inclusion of Tate and Liza rather than playing Lily? I don't know. I'm kind of torn between the two right now. Uh, not a fan of Sightseer, by the way. I don't like the idea of it too much. Uh, as I said, it's only good if you discard your whole hand. Like, that's when you draw five. But other than that, you might as well play like a Sophocles or something. I don't know. <laughs> Nonetheless, let me know your thoughts as always. The deck list will be in the description. And of course, will be on my Discord server if you do want to come and join. Uh, where I just from uploads and stuff. We can have deck discussions and all that kind of stuff. It'll be great. But with that all said, if you did like this video, of course, do leave a like to show your support. And of course, subscribe for more videos. But with that all said, I'll leave you to it. I do hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Take care and peace.